All right, time to keep going through R6 RS. Okay, um, we're still in section one. We're up to variables and binding. So this is the right-hand column of page six, section 1.3. Oops. All right, I got my new fancy Kinesis keyboard with Dvorak layout, my vertical mouse in between the two halves, my wrist guardy thingies that I wear on my wrist, the magnetic wrist guards on the Kinesis, the wrist guard, I mean like the wrist pad for my mouse, my laptop stand, all very ergonomic, and I lowered my desk a little more. Um, very ergonomic. Uh, it's going to take me a while to learn how to type again. So we'll, we'll uh, deal with that as it comes up. All right. So let's read about variables and binding. 1.3, variables and binding. Scheme allows identifiers to stand for locations containing values. Okay, locations containing values. Okay, so we have a, a, a con we have two concepts here that we haven't seen before: identifiers and locations. We've already encountered values. Remember, we have an expression that evaluates to a value. Okay, so now we also have locations and we have identifiers. These identifiers are called variables. Okay. Now we have variables as a concept. In many cases, specifically when the location's value is never modified after creation, it is useful to think of the variable as standing for the value directly. Okay, here's an example. Let x be 23, y be 42. Body of the let is plus x, y. The result of that expression should be 65. So that expression evaluates to the value 65. All right, let's see if we can test that out. All right, let's see if I can resize my window a little bit so we can see this. Now I could just try typing in, I mean, uh, copying and pasting the expression, but one thing that Dan Friedman advocates, and I think he's right, when learning a language or experimenting with code, it's best to type it in yourself. That just, you know, first of all, it gives you a chance of making mistakes. So maybe there's something off with where you think parentheses go, for example. So if you type it in, make a mistake, now you will have to figure out what's going on. How is that different from what was written down? Also, sometimes you get copy and paste errors uh, related to the fact we're copying from a PDF and maybe has all sorts of strange characters or invisible formatting. So that's another issue. But the main thing is you just tend to pay more attention. So with my fancy new keyboard, left pro, oh, there we go. That's a good start. Now, where's the L? Ooh, that wasn't so bad. Space with my thumb. All right, space is now right thumb. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, so I'm not gonna be able to do that. So I, I knew that wouldn't work. So let's see if I do upper, oh. Uh, all right, how would I do this with my regular keyboard? Let's try this. Okay, Command W. Okay. Uh, Control Y. Oh no. Control W. Oh, that did something. What happened? Whoa, what was that? All right, here we go. Control Y. Whoa. I don't want the new line. Just control. Huh? All right, we'll do it the old way. Hmm. 
We're going to channel the power of Bob Weir learning slide guitar while on tour with the Grateful Dead. If he can do it, we can do this. Okay, control J. Control, where's J? Yay! Control L. Yeah. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. Y. Where would Y be located? Now. Uh, 42. Okay. Control J. Woo! Did it! <laughs> oh! Huh? Mm. Let's try Control C. No. Q. Ooh. Okay. Escape P. Yeah. Wow. I was afraid I was going to have to type that one again. What? Invalid command. All right. Well, that worked. Doesn't that look right? <sighs> Q. All right. Uh, I'm going to go to my laptop keyboard here for a second. What in the world's going on? Escape. Was it? Escape P. He. What's going on here? Let invalid command. All right, hold on. <laughs> okay, now this is interesting. Starting Shay. That's right. What in the world could be going on? Let X be 23. If anyone at home can see what I'm doing wrong... Be very interested to know. All right, as expected. Now let's go up here. Huh? So, what's different about this? Is there some invisible character? Or, I mean, it looks. Doesn't that look identical? Eh? All right, I am going to type it again. Oh, I'm faster already. Look at that. Huh? 
I wonder if it has to do with the control J. I don't think so. I used control J when I typed it in the other time. Whoops. All right, let's try it. Huh. Well, it worked. I don't know what I was doing before. Let me make sure escape P works. Yeah. Weird. All right, I must have done something weird. It seems to be working okay. All right, well, sure enough, that evaluates to 65. So, if I do escape P again, let's take a look at this. Control L. All right. So, so X and Y, whoops. X and Y here are identifiers. These are variable references. And um, I believe according to this, to the report, these X and Y's are also identifiers. So here, these identifiers are in binding position. So we're giving the value of X and Y. You know, we're giving X and Y values, and then we're referring to those values. We're referring to those values below, and what the report is saying that really um, X and Y are identifiers that stand for locations. Okay, so. Uh, in other words, X is a location in memory where the value 23 is being stored. And in the body of the let where the X is in scope, if we wanted to, we could actually change the value of X. So let's see if we can <clears throat> see if we can do that. Uh, let's see, control. Okay, yeah, let's do a set bang. All right, so we're gonna set bang X. To be eight. All right. So if the value associated, you know, in the location referred to by the identifier X is updated, so the value is eight instead of 23, when we evaluate plus X, Y, then we should get 50 back. Sure enough, that worked. So it's showing that X isn't, you know, the, the identifier X or the variable X isn't the same as 23. It's X really is a name for an, a location that has a value associated with it, which is 23. And we can change the value that's in that location with set bang. And the other point is if we aren't mutating or changing that location, or the value of uh, that's in the location pointed to by X or referred to by X or named by X, then we can pretend that X is 23. So we can uh, think of it that way. So there's a, a notion of referential transparency. Um, Amr Sabri always says that you should talk about referential transparency with respect to some property or with respect to something. Uh, but in any case, the idea here is that when you see a reference to X, if you're in a purely functional context, like if we go back, 
escape p escape p okay so when we're in this purely functional context where we're not uh, modifying the value of x we're just saying that x has a location that has the value 23 then if we're just going to refer to x and we're not going to update the value in that location then we can just pretend that x is 23 it'd be the same as plopping a 23 in where we, wherever we see a reference to x which obviously would not be correct up here we couldn't just plop in a 23 wherever we saw x because of that supping okay so let's see, enter by the way this is an example of the sort of reasoning you can do when your program's written in a certain style like functional style you can um, start thinking about things like referential transparency and the properties that you have um, unfortunately can go out the window as soon as you start introducing things like mutation you know it only takes one set bang in a program for your entire chain of reasoning to collapse oh. now you can use mutation locally you can use you know this is a local set bang x is not a global variable um, and so within a local context you can still you know do some reasoning and say okay i understand the behavior of the set bang in this context and the entire let still is an expression and that side effect that mutation is hidden right within this expression so there's no way for the mutation of the x to leak out so there's in some sense this is fine okay this doesn't destroy our global reasoning about programs but if we start set banging global variables then uh, we can easily get into trouble um, and and as soon as we have set bangs we just have to start being very careful okay so um, it's not to say that you should never use set bang the local set bangs are often fine and if you look at like kent divig's code he uses local set bangs a lot uh, it's not not a problem but you just have to be careful in how you do reasoning what, what you don't want is sort of unstructured mutation all over the place you know you, you you effectively then have a c program where you're mutating global state all the time and it becomes very difficult to reason about especially if you have any sort of concurrency or threading going on and it's it becomes a nightmare to think about okay great in this case the expression starting with let is a binding construct okay binding means we're going to give a value to a variable and we're going to give a scope to the variable with the binding construct or that's you know something like let there's a scope in which the x is is um, this reference to x refers to the binding there okay the parenthesized structure following the let lists variables alongside expressions okay so we have the variables uh, x and the variable y and we have the expressions on the right now these are self-evaluating or literal expressions so these are pretty simple but they could be arbitrarily complicated expressions there's no reason you have to be have 23 you could have plus 10 13 you know do an addition there um, that's fine because that expression will be evaluated and the value associated or bound to that variable all right the variable x alongside 23 and the variable y alongside 42 the let expression binds x to 23 and y to 42 these bindings are available in the body of the let expression plus xy and only there so we have this notion of scoping so only within the body of the let is this binding to x visible and this binding to y visible so you know i was able to do the set bang of x to 8 inside of the let but if i try grabbing that Oh boy. Uh, OK. 
Okay, so let me try doing this up bang at the top level outside of the let. <laughs> Hoist upon my own petard. All right. At the top level in Shay, I just defined X. <laughs> oh, fail. All right, let's try this again. Let's try this again. That's what I get for doing the mutation. All right, let's let's sh control X, control C. Yes. Oh. oh. All right. Let's see. So control Z C control X one control X plus. All right. This time we're going to grab the let. Now, I'm not going to set bang X. I learned my lesson because we're at the top level. Set banging X and Shea actually creates uh, X, a binding of X at the top level. So let's just try referring to X, okay? We're just going to do a variable reference. So is X 23? No. Exception. X is not bound. Variable X is not bound. Hmm. Okay. So... We can refer to X, but only within the scope of that let binding. Okay, great. <clears throat> the body of the let expression. Okay, moving on. 1.4 definitions. The variables bound by a let expression are local. Oh, see, this is what we're talking about. Because their bindings are visible only in the let's body. Scheme also allows creating top-level bindings for identifiers as follows. And I accidentally created one using Zepbang. Define X to be 23, define Y to be 42, plus XY. So this is at the top level. Uh, these are actually top level in the body of a top-level program or library, C section 1.12 below. Okay, let's try this. Now, at least in R5RS, my understanding was that the notion of the top level behavior was not very well specified. Like that set bang X to be eight or whatever I did, I don't know if that was actually defined, the behavior was defined in R5RS. So I think it may have been implementation specific and it might be implementation specific in R6. I remember early versions of the REPL for R6 implementations often were very awkward to use and over time they changed. So, but anyway, let's just go ahead and try this at the top level. Okay. All right. Control L to center it. My friend, define. Eh. Okay, great.
Great. It's amazing. I'm actually starting to get better. I mean, you can see me getting a little faster as I'm typing. All right, so we get 65. All right, and that's what we expected. All right, so, so we now can refer to x at the top level. Great. And I can set bang x at the top level to change it. Close. Now, notice, however, you know, I can do the let binding. Okay. And then if I refer to X again at the top level, it's still 137, so it's not like the top-level binding was affected by the fact that we did this local binding of x to 25, I mean, x to 23 in the let. Okay, great. Um, and furthermore, this local x that we refer to here, that's actually the value of x here, 23. Um, so we've shadowed the top-level definition of x. Okay, so those are different X's, even though they have the same name X because they're in different scopes. All right. <clears throat> Very nice. Uh, da, da, da. These are actually top level in the body of a top level program or library. Okay. So notice there's no discussion of a REPL. So we can also create an entire program, like have a file we load or a library. And so we get the top level behavior that way. There's no notion of a read eval print loop at, so far, at least. So I don't know if somehow the REPL semantics are supposed to be like a top level program where you evaluate from top down, like if you just loaded a file or how it differs from a library. I, th I thought with libraries, you couldn't redefine things. So I think we can do another definition of X Yeah, so we can redefine X without any problem. Um, I don't know that that's the case in library. I thought library could only have one definition of an identifier at the top level. Uh, the first two parenthesized structures are definitions. Okay, these define X 23, define Y 42. Definitions are not expressions. Okay, so we have been seeing expressions, evaluation of an expression to a value, but now we have something that's not an expression. So the let is an expression. Okay, that's a binding form, it's a, but it's also an expression, whereas the definition is not an expression. We're not evaluating the definition to get a value, right? So with the let expression, we get a value back. Uh, definitions, we don't get a value back. They're, they're used in a different context. They create top-level bindings, binding x to 23 and y to 42. Definitions are not expressions and cannot appear in all places where an expression can occur. Moreover, a definition has no value. So if we, let's see. Okay, so with our let, which is an expression and gives us a value, we can do something like wrap the entire let in a call to list.
I'm going to have to learn par edit after all. Okay. Uh. There we go. We have the value in the list. But if we try that, with their define. Let's see what happens here. Exception, invalid context for definition. Okay, so you're not allowed to do that. That argument to list is in expression context, not definition context. All right. Moreover, a definition has no value. Great. Bindings follow the lexical structure of the program. When several bindings with the same name exist, a variable refers to the binding that is closest to it, starting with its occurrence in the program and going from inside to outside and referring to a top-level binding if no local binding can be found along the way. Ooh, look at this terrible page break. Ugh. It broke across a let. That's unfortunate. Okay, so we have a top-level definition of x to 23, a top-level definition of y to 42, and then a let binding, y to 42, and I bet the x is something, x, oh, just plus x, y. Ugh, that's ugly. Okay, so we had y being 42 at the top level. I mean, it still is. And so now within the, the let body, y is going to be 43, and I guess we're going to add it to 23, so we'll get 66 instead of 65, okay? And then here, let y be 43, let y be 44. Notice that this is an inner let, so this is the body. Whoops, let me get careful my friends. So that entire let expression is the body of the outermost let. So within this expression, y will be 43, but when we're evaluating the addition of x and y, the y, and when we want to find out what y is bound to, we work inside out. So we find the first binding, or the most local binding of y. So it's 44. So we forget about the 43, forget about what the top level binding is within the context of this let, within the, you know, when we're looking at that variable reference. Now for x, there are, are no local bindings of x, so we would use the global value of x. All right. That is how it works. We are up to uh, page 7, 1.5 forms. Good stopping point. We finished page 6. All right. Um, that was a little slow and awkward with the typing, but you know, uh, I think I'll get faster and figure it out. Maybe I'll have to switch the par edit at some point just because the slurp, slurping in the sub-expression is so painful right now for me and it might might be a good time to learn it, but um, I don't know. Well, I'll think about it. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.